love. Some would say it took a backseat when the pandemic forced us apart. As a family-run and proudly Canadian-owned company, Charm Diamond Centres saw the need to bring us together with tales of love and created the Canadian Love Map podcast. Since then, we've shared hundreds of real, uplifting stories that prove love conquers all. So thank you for listening. We couldn't do it without you. And remember, love starts here. You can only really show someone how much you love them by how you treat them every day and how you support them. And dinners, you know, you'll have a million dinners, you own a million dates, right? It's everything, for me, it's everything in between that, that, that matters, right? Welcome to the Canadian Love Map, a podcast that celebrates love stories of all kinds, presented by Canada's largest family-owned jeweler, Charm Diamond Centres. As the song goes, life is a highway, but sometimes we take side roads that lead nowhere. Those wrong turns can teach us what we don't want, though, and that was the case for Marie. Her love life was a minefield of mistakes until she met Jamie. Their story proves there are plenty of fish in the sea and demonstrates the transformative power of partnership. Find out how their love has changed their lives in this episode of the Canadian Love Map. We're going to start from scratch and say, tell me about yourselves and where you're from originally. Sure. Um, So my name's Marie Helen. I'm originally French. I'm from northern New Brunswick, Bathurst. Uh, my name is Jamie Ryder. I'm originally from uh, Sydney, Cape Breton, Nova Scotia. I left home when I was 18, joined the military, uh, did five years service, uh, realized I'm terrible at being in the military, uh, started being a handyman, doing uh, little side jobs, wrapped that up about two years ago, and since then I've been a uh, union organizer. Okay. So this story, I guess that um, your love story sort of starts with Marie. Is that right? Oh, yes. Um, Well, we were both on Plenty of Fish. I had been in Halifax for probably about two years at that time. Uh, After lots of turmoil in my previous years, uh, came to live here with my uh, around my siblings, a couple of my Let's siblings. Let's go back to the turmoil. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Not to dig too much into yeah. the dirt. Uh, you know, I don't want to throw too many uh, skeletons around, but let's dig into that turmoil you talk about. Uh, yeah, so I, in high school, met a boy, started dating. It was a passionate, lots of fighting, lots of not fighting. (laughs) Uh, That happened throughout like six years. While I was in college, we followed each other, broke up, moved to Charlottetown. He moved back to New Brunswick. I followed him. Lots of that kind of stuff. And and then uh, we had an unfortunate uh, incident, I suppose. Uh, I had gotten pregnant, found out just after we broke up. Decided to get back together and give it a try. And unfortunately, I'm type 1 diabetic. Pregnancies don't always go the, the best way with diabetics. So I uh, lost her just just before she was born, 34 weeks. Oh, wow. I'm sorry. Yeah, thanks. Um, and, and we tried to hang on for a few more for like about a half a year and it just wasn't working. So decided a fresh start was needed and came to Halifax. So you had had a bumpy road, yes, both in your life and in your love life in particular. Mm -hmm. And what was it like to arrive in Halifax? Was it any? Did did it look up? (laughs) Was it was it better? Yes. Well, Halifax was a fresh start. I got to be around a couple of my siblings that uh, live here. It was nice. I was able to transfer my job, so I had work. I had a place to stay. Uh, Best friend moved. I moved in with one of my best friends that we went to culinary school together. And uh, just started fresh. And so what was the dating scene like then? Um, Iffy. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I had gone on a couple of dates uh, through online dating. And I dated one person that was probably two feet shorter than he said he was. Uh, kept asking about my bra sizes during the date, <laughs> and it was absolutely terrible. <laughs> I, I laughed the whole time, and he actually asked to come in. No, 
So went on a few pretty terrible dates, but they just make for great stories, honestly. (laughs) Your experience had probably made you grow up a lot. Yes. Yes. Right. You went through you went through a, a very difficult life challenge and had a big loss. And, and I think when you go through a grief tunnel like that, you necessarily mature at a, a faster rate than you would have otherwise. So yeah. did you know more so who you were and what you were looking for when you came to Halifax? A little bit more, but it, it still took a few a couple years of finding some more. Um I mean, I've always been, I've always wanted a family of my own, always wanted kids. So the, the first blow was, was pretty hard. Um, but once I had time to recuperate, recover a little bit from that, then I knew that I'd still want kids in my family. I just wanted, I wanted someone to be my partner, not, I had a bit of a problem where my ex, exes would put me in kind of on a pedestal, which was fun, but not in what you need for a long-term relationship. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so then you're on the dating scene, you catch some fish that you throw back. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And was there any point at which you just got discouraged? Yes, it was very discouraging. I did end up dating one person for about a year and it was the first time I dated someone younger. It was only younger by like a year or two, but, um, just figured out that I had a, I had lived a lot more than they had, so they weren't ready to settle down. Um, after that, I saw Jamie's profile and decided to message him. Uh-huh. So this is on the dating website, Plenty of Fish. Is it a website or an app? It's a website. It was before... What's that other one? Tinder? Tinder. It was before Tinder happened or just around, just the, around same. the same time. What was different about Jamie's profile? Uh, well, his picture caught me off guard a little bit because I grew up. I was a sea cadet. I love to sail. I was a sailing instructor. I love boats. Uh, and his cover picture was him on a sailboat. And I was like, well, wow, he knows how to sail. So I like him. <laughs> that's the only time in my life i've ever been on a sailboat so i was gonna say did you photoshop that no no it was it was my friend's boat and we were just going out for a, a day trip out to um one of the islands in the harbor and i said take a cool picture of me for my profile and so we did so and then a bunch of i got most of the messages i received were why are you not wearing a life jacket So more than actual people interested in talking to me about anything they were just critiquing my water safety so Isn't that funny? Did you dream when you asked your friend to take that picture that it could be the start of a great love story? No. (laughs) No, I don't have that much foresight. I had no game, by the way. Uh, I just decided to shoot him a message. I did read his profile. I cannot tell you what it said anymore because it was too many years ago. But uh, I decided to send him a message and it was basically like, Hey, how you doing? No, it was just hey. <laughs> just hey. H-E-Y. Just hey. Yeah. I heard a rumor that she's the romantic, but you have the memory. It's, yes, for, for a lot of things. Yeah, it's not as good as I'd like it to be, but yeah. So she messaged you, hey. Hey, that was it. Yep. All right. And where were you and what was your reaction? I was in Australia at the time. Uh, my sister was getting married. So I, I went over to Australia, New Zealand for, for six weeks for a little bit of adventure. And um, I was doing some soul searching myself while I was there. I was deciding if I, if I want to settle down or if I want to go back and just play the game for a while and jump through some relationships. People that are listening know what I'm talking about. Um, <laughs> but we, we chatted for about three weeks before I got back. And I knew coming back that I had a pretty pretty good one on the line I guess you'd say if you want to keep the plenty of fish puns rolling but <laughs> yeah and yeah and then we we met when, when I got back to town I flew in on the 27th and then we met like six hours later and I thought I was dying from the jet lag it was vicious absolutely vicious when we actually met in person it was at the uh, uh boardroom cafe thought to myself she's shorter than I thought she was going to be but that's okay <laughs> <laughs> Wearing her, her, her blue beret and her rosy cheeks because it was chilly out. And then we drank a lot of coffee and played a lot of board games and talked, right? And it just went on a lot longer. Okay, how long is long for that first date? Oh, it was 
three or three hours plus, right? Yeah, it was yeah. three or four hours. Yeah. yeah. Just enjoyed ourselves, right? And I tried to stay awake. I fought, <laughs> I fought and fought and fought just to keep my head up. Did she know you were jet lagged? Yes. <laughs> it came up in conversation quite a few times. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and where did the love story go from there? We spent a lot of time together over the next few weeks. Yeah. Uh, New Year's Eve, she invited me to her sister's house for New Year's Eve, and I met her family. And um, I was referred to as Champ and that guy. Because <laughs> 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 I'm seven years older than her, so I'm closer to her older sister's age. I'm older than her other siblings, and I'm just some random guy that just showed up. And I don't know if it's just because of the people she dated in the past, but they're like, yeah, whatever, this guy. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't expect you to last long? I guess not. No, no, I guess not. I definitely remember mom not thinking that you were going to last long. Yeah. How is your relationship different than your past relationships? For me, um, just being on the same page, having the same yeah. goals, moving in the same direction together. Like every the, the, my previous relationships, um, it was either they didn't want to have kids or um, they wanted me to stop being in business and get a job. Right. What was different about this relationship for you? A lot of along the lines what Jamie said as well, but just level headedness. He was very supportive. I was supportive of his entrepreneurial goals and anything that he put his mind to and vice versa. It it just worked. <laughs> and when did it shift gears again? I guess I am I am a few years older than her, so. I didn't want to wait. I knew. <laughs> I knew. I was like, yeah, I can, I can work with her. She's good. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you ask? Uh, we were in bed. And I pulled the ring out from under a pillow and asked her. And she went, yeah, people can't see me, shock look. <laughs> she had the shock look on her face. And then she just said yes. And my, my, my sister-in-law and my brother knew because she worked at Charm Jewelry. And I bought the ring from her. So they knew. <laughs> but no, no one else did. Yeah. yeah. And it sounds like you both were on the same page that you knew you wanted kids. Yep. Oh, yeah. What was that conversation like? Before we even met, we had that conversation. <laughs> oh, because you were so clear on what you wanted, probably. We're pretty, both of us were pretty clear on that one. Yeah. We wanted to make sure kids were in our future. So in that first stage of your relationship that was long distance, he was in Australia, you were in Halifax, and you were already saying, putting it right out front, this is what I want, this is what I need from a relationship. Yeah, it's no fun finding out two years in, they don't want kids, right? Yeah, so that doesn't work. Yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, we were very upfront with each other what we wanted. So is the next chapter, the baby makes three? Pretty close, yeah. There was a little while there. Um, yeah. We were together for, married for about a year. We moved into a house. I, I had another scheme. I tried another scheme and that she backed me up on. <laughs> and I got a massive, I got this big house and uh, then filled it up with uh, international students. But while we were, while we were in that house, uh, we started trying and it, well, it didn't take long. It was just, it was too much. I mean, she was five, six months pregnant. And she's like, I can't do this while I'm pregnant. And I said, you're right, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> and we found a place over in Dartmouth and we Cute got there. Cute little two bedroom house. Cute little two bedroom house shut. And I think we moved in in September. And then Veronica came along in January. Mm -hmm. uh, we did have a little bit of troubles again with that diabetes and pregnancy thing does not go well. So I ended up going partially blind during my pregnancy couldn't drive or read anymore. Oh my gosh. So that was fun. Uh, I was put off work like four months before she came and I was on bed rest. And my mom came to live with us basically to help us out and drive me to all my appointments and made it through that. Veronica came out very healthy, although a little bit of a low blood sugar. Uh, so we had what, 12 hours in the NICU? No, she was in there for, for two, two days. Two days, yeah. Two days, yeah, two days in the NICU. And then a little bit of jaundice and yeah. then she was fine. Then she got to be a glow worm under all the lights. <laughs> and and we got to go home and and be our, our adorable little family with Veronica who wouldn't sleep anywhere but on my chest. <laughs> Oh, yeah. yes. Yeah. That's not, not straining. Then you had jet lag. Yeah. Yes. Just a little. 
where did the name come from? Did you did you agree? You say you're so compatible. Things are so easy. <laughs> was that an easy conversation? No. No. It no. was between two names. It was between Veronica and Juliet. I really like Juliet. Jamie really liked Veronica. And it was an homage to his dad. They wanted to nickname her Ronnie so that it was close to, to Ronald. Ron, uh, another thing, your dad is a huge Veronica and Betty fan. Yeah, from Archie. Oh, you're yeah. kidding. Yeah, 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 that's his thing. <laughs> is she like that? Well, she's three now, right? Yeah. yeah. Almost. And, okay, so what kind of personality sh- does she have at three? A big one. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of drama. H- head of the pack. Oh, yes. Yeah. Come on, friends. Let's go, friends. And just stay <laughs> here. I'll go into the park, and she wants to be in the front. Oh, my goodness. And she's good at manipulating mom. Very good. <laughs> Not so much dad, but very good with mom. <laughs> she's her everything, for sure. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's talk about your other endeavors, because I understand that your love partnership has has sparked interesting career paths, or at least one. Let's talk about that. Yeah, for sure. Um, well, actually, it's uh, Jamie and his cousin Bobby started it. Yes, I saw an ad on Facebook for a virtual reality Halloween pop-up called the Hospital of Horror, and I was like... That sounds like fun. And I had never done virtual reality before. I had, you know, so, but I, I had seen videos, so I, I knew what it was about. <clears throat> and we are gamers at heart. And we are gamers. We're big time gamers. And then we called the mall in Dartmouth, got a spot to rent out. We had marketing out there and we just ran the program that we put through, I think, 900 people in the first year. Tw- I don't know. 1700. Was that how many people it was? Yeah, it was a lot of people. So you were an entrepreneur Always. at heart. Always, yeah. Right. Yeah, I, learned, I got that from my dad. So, yeah. Uh, I wanted to be, so my dad was an entrepreneur, grew up, him running his own businesses. So I definitely had that entrepreneurial mind, but I'm also a bit of a, less of a dreamer sometimes. So a little more practical. I'm type one diabetic. I always knew I was going to need like health insurance, that kind of stuff. It ended up going to call center jobs because they provided insurance, doing the safe choices, I guess. Uh, it definitely took Jamie to to bring that out. You only live <laughs> once. So yeah. why waste time? And we jumped into owning it a brick and mortar location, and then sprang nearby Planet VR. Yeah. We didn't really know what we were doing. Mary turned it around really quick and <laughs> is doing a better job than I could ever imagine doing. <laughs> She's really, really coming to her own. So we're all super proud of her. Wow. <laughs> and I love the fact that you had an entrepreneurial spark, mm-hmm. but you needed his drive, maybe, and his yeah. his belief in order to make it happen? Yeah, definitely. Um, just him believing in me was a big thing and pushing me out that door. <laughs> it sounds to me like you have brought out the best in each other. Mm-hmm. I'd like to think so. Yeah. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Although he does still make me mad. I do. Yeah. From time to time. <laughs> but she makes me less of a robot. So. <laughs> Is she making you any more romantic? That's the question. No, I'm fighting hard against that no. one. No. No. I, show, I have I sh- to plan everything. She does. She does. <laughs> I, uh, I'm not. I don't show my love in romantic ways. I do it, and, I, and I'm, I'm not one for public displays of affection or putting it all out there. I'm very private when it comes to how I, my feelings about the people close to me, so I, I keep that tucked away. That's for her. I'm right? surprised you're here. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you can only really show someone how much you love them by how you treat them every day and how you support them. And, and dinners, you know, you'll have a million dinners. You have a million dates, right? It's everything. For me, it's everything in between that. That that matters, right? So see, you're romantic. Yeah, I know it's for you though. <laughs> <laughs> Love. I'll, I'll, I'll share it with. I'll share this much with the world, right? But this is. But it's for you. So. So for you guys, love is a verb. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Definitely yep. actions. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Well, done. thank you so much yep. for sharing your story with us. You're welcome. Thanks for thanks for having us in. We're glad to share. It's really nice to talk about it. 
Thanks so much for listening to the Canadian Love Map. If you love us, please subscribe and share. We'll be back next week with another love story to add to the map. This podcast is brought to you by Charm Diamond Centres, Canada's largest family-owned jewellery store. They are proud to be putting love on the map. And the staff at Charm Diamond Centres are thrilled to be a part of your love story too. So visit CharmDiamondCentres.com or one of your local stores. Love starts here. This podcast is made possible by Charm Diamond Centers. It's hosted by me, Nancy Regan, and is produced and distributed by Podstarter.